everybody. Uh, I love coming out to New York. Uh, my family is out here, and I love coming out to meet all of our customers and talk with developers in the industry. So I'm, I'm pretty excited to be here. And I also want to talk a little bit about, whoops, about why. So this is me. Sorry, I have curly hair, if you didn't recognize me a little bit. Um, this is me about 15 years ago. And this is the reason why I'm so excited to be working at GitHub. I work on the product management team where I run all of our community tools. And so I work on our dashboard and I work on community forum. I work on a lot of things that our maintainers and our open source contributors really love. Except 15 years ago, I, this is me, I'm a, I'm a trained engineer. Um, and then I eventually, through my career, found myself in product management. And this is me at working for a design agency. And I look, like you can say, I look really sad in this photo. And um, I was. I was staring at my computer. I was staring at a green and black screen. And I was also looking out at, I was the only engineer at this company and working with probably about 20 different visual, um, visual design and uh, user experience design um, uh, designers, and my, they were my colleagues. And I was looking out at all of them, and they were having a blast. They were like, we are with, we're with our people. We totally understand this. Like, we're having such a good time. And I was like, oh, I'm just back here like, coding away on these beautiful designs. I was having a really good time. But I was by myself. So what I didn't have was my community. I didn't have people to talk to, people to learn from, people that could mentor me. And I was seeing this happening all around me. So I was. I was pretty disappointed in that. And I think it probably ultimately did end up resulting in me not advancing or learning as much as I could have at that time when I was working as an engineer in 2006 in San Francisco. Luckily, times have changed. So on the GitHub platform right now, we have 40 million developers. And those are developers who are connected all around the globe. 40 million is a lot. Like, uh, we went from like, working as a solitary engineer in the basement on a green and black screen to 40 million of our best friends working with us. And, and what is happening is that this is actually changing. We've noticed that there are, we've seen that there are 10 million developers who joined GitHub just last year. So this is rapidly advancing. There are a lot of new people who are coming to the platform. And this isn't just developers in open source. It's not just maintainers. These are people who are in organizations as well. We have over, 300, or th over 3 million organizations that are using GitHub. And this is from uh, some of the Fortune 500. And according to the Black Duck survey, it was the future of open source from 2006. Um, they said that 39% of companies said that they were using open source. So, and, then in two, and that was in 2010. And in 2015, that number doubled. 78% of companies said that they were using open source. And so the companies are tapping into the power of open source. And what they're doing is they're putting their operating systems, these aren't just their pet projects, they're putting their operating systems, their databases, their critical developer workflows, all are using open source. So why are they doing this? They're doing this for a couple of different reasons. Uh, the communities that are using open source and using GitHub they're looking for freedom of vendor locked in, so they want to be able to make their own decisions about the software that they're using. They're looking for the quality of the solutions that they're investing in. So they're looking for who is maintaining these projects, what does the history look like. They want all of that information out in the open so that you can make smarter security decisions, smarter investments in the future of your software. And then, ultimately, they're looking for the ability to customize and fix. And I think that's so important, because that means that companies are pushing their engineering teams to then contribute back to open source because of the amount that they're using. So when you really think about that, they want to be able to customize and fix. 65% of companies are, are contributing back to open source. The open source that they're using, they're consuming it, they're also contributing back to it. 67% of the companies that Black Duck talked to are actually in actively encouraging their developers to contribute back to open source, which means they get to take more advantage of powering that community, of, of participating in these kinds of conversations. And that is paying off. 
So Black Duck, as part of that research paper, they surveyed over 1,100 different, um, different code bases, and they found that there was an open source component in, all, in nearly all of them. And actually, on average, there were 257 open source components present in all of those code bases. And at GitHub, we found this, too. We've actually found that, that, the, that software projects that are using open source are um, we found that there are 99% of, of software projects that have open source dependencies. And so you can think about it this way. You, you think about the 40 million developers, and then 99% of software projects have open source dependencies. So when you import an open source project into your project, you're not just typing in import and getting access to a different kind of code base. What you're doing, whoops. What you're doing is, <laughs> what you're doing is actually extending your team. You're extending your team to the people who are contributing to the code that is powering those dependencies. But when we think about this, when you think about me sitting in the back of that design studio, overlooking my computer at all of my friends, having a good time, I was a solitary developer, but those days don't exist. We don't have developers who are filling that stereotype, the solitary developer with a lot of pizza and Red Bull, working on a green and black screen by themselves. This truly is a very connected community. And this means that we're extending our teams, and that is a powerful and very good thing for your company because you are extending your, your team, you're, you're tapping into millions of different people who have different ideas and can contri contribute back to how you're thinking about software, how you're talking about software, where it's going, the future of it, et cetera. So speaking of the future of all of this, I want to talk a little bit about, I think, something that I struggle with and I think about a lot at GitHub. I know you all do too, and that is how do we hire and retain people to work on our projects in our companies. So we're becoming more and more dependent on open source itself. But at the same time, traditionally, we, we, when we recruit engineers, we require them to have a, a CS degree. And often, we want them to have five or more years of experience. And when you think about open source growing so fast, a lot of people are coming to open source. They're brand new. They're out of college. They don't have a CS degree. They don't have five years of experience. They're learning from their peers. They're contributing to some of the most impactful open source projects in the world, and they are brilliant. Wouldn't you like to have them at your company? In 2016, only 60,000, just over 60,000 CS degrees were awarded. There are 500,000, according to the Depart Department of Labor, 500,000 computer-related jobs open today. So at this rate, only 19% of those jobs can be filled with people, by people with CS degrees. And then when you think about that requirement, five years experience, in 2019, according to Stack Overflow, less than 50% of the people who answered that survey said they had five years experience, even though they had experience with open source, they're contributing, they definitely have the skills to be able to do this. And this gets even worse. By 2016, there will be 3.5 million tech jobs available. So if we continue down this rate of thinking about these traditional requirements for open source, we're continuing to lock people out of the story. So what I want to do is kind of propose this new way of thinking about, about contributions and when we think about who we want to hire. So a lot of people, a lot of recruiters will come to GitHub and they'll say, uh, I want to hire some, or they'll, they'll look at somebody's GitHub profile and they say, I want to hire somebody who has a lot of green squares. I purposefully didn't put green squares up here because I want to talk about this a little more abstractly. But this is my contribution graph. I took this photo last night. And luckily, I didn't get discouraged uh, 15 years ago when I continued on my journey with writing software. But this, these are all of, the, all of the contributions that I've made to various different projects over the past year. In reality, especially because I'm a product manager, I have a lot of conversations. I have conversations with my customers, with maintainers, developers, with my teammates, et cetera. And we're talking about plans, we're talking about bugs, we're, we're talking about all of the things that happen in and around the code. So really, my contribution graph 
should look more like this. Every single one of those black squares, those places where it looks like I'm not doing that much work, I am doing so much work with my team to talk about the entire project. So what we're talking about here really is somebody's reputation. Because what it takes to contribute to open source is not just the commit, it's everything that happens around it. It's understanding the, uh, the contribution guidelines. The Kubernetes team has a lot of conversations out in the open that they actually just have to record via video and make public. All of that stuff is not necessarily code that they're committing, but it is extremely valuable to them to be able to advance the Kubernetes project. This is happening all over the place. So if you, if you look into open source and you look into where people are having these kinds of conversations, they do have these conversations in the code, in issues, in pull requests, um, write-ups, in, in commit messages, et cetera. But you also have to see these conversations all over the place. So and you see these conversations from experts as well. Yehuda Katz, who, who worked on Ember, he's talking about, he knows a ton about JavaScript frameworks. He's here talking about what he loves about TypeScript. Wouldn't you, as a new developer, like to tap into that information from Yehuda? He's putting it all up on Twitter for you publicly. There are developer, dev.2, dev developer communities who are making it possi more possible for developers to talk about what they're interested in, their projects, et cetera, beyond the code. And you also see open source communities like the OpenJS Foundation talking about their releases on Medium and where to go and get the release, what's in it, et cetera. So there's so much more information about this than, than we really think about when we're just looking at that one contribution graph. And one of the things I love about thinking about open source in this new way, or in a kind of a different way, is it means that we're lowering the barrier to entry for the people who are new to the platform or people who are new to coding in general. And those are the people who are the most vulnerable and the most valuable as we think about advancing software in general. We want those people to stick around. And so we want to empower developers to mentor them, to invite them into that conversation. And that's why those, those negative moments in my contribution graph are so important. And I want to talk, you, talk a little bit about where this happened recently. I think probably you've all seen this picture. This is um, the photo of the black hole. Uh, and hopefully you've seen it by now. If not, um, this, this photo is, yeah, one of my favorites. Um, I am a huge, also a huge space geek, so I love telling this story. But basically, scientists have theorized that black holes exist for a really long time, but we have never gotten a photo of one. And so this team found one in a galaxy like 55 million light years away, and they, just, they, they found one that would be a very good candidate to be able to take a photo of. But the problem was they had to build, no one telescope could, could go take a photo of something 55 million light years away, so they had to build a planet-sized telescope. What they did was they connected all of the different, um, they connected like I think 12 different telescopes all around the world triangulated a whole bunch of stuff, um, took photos of, uh, of the black hole when they had to navigate weather systems and all kinds of stuff. They took photos of the black hole from all of these different, um, all of these different telescopes all around the world, and they collected all of that data. And all of that data needed to be processed somehow. And the team, I love this photo, this is Dr. Katie Bauman, who was one of the lead engineers, lead scientists on this project. And what I love about this photo is it shows that, that, that moment where she's looking at this, at her screen for the first time, she's seeing this photo rendered for the first time, and it's just pure joy. She's, it's all of the hard work that went into years of her basically crunching numbers and working with this data to be able to bring the scientific discovery to the world. And this photo captures that moment. So when I look at it, I'm thinking, what? What happened over those, over, over those years while she's crunching these numbers? And it's really, we actually, at GitHub, we were like, OK, well, data, code, processing, image. They used open source. And so we asked ourselves this question, and the answer was actually really cool. There, we looked at something called community contributions, which I'll, I'll explain in a second. But 
But the amount, basically, the amount of, they had hundreds of core contributors to the actual project, but the amount of contributors that built that image was just over 21,000. So that's pretty incredible. That's the power of the open source network. So when you think about those core contributors, those were the direct contributors. And really, that's just the tip of the iceberg, right? Those are people who you know by name, you're probably working with a lot, those are your, your teammates, your colleagues, et cetera. And there's, they're the ones that you're reviewing their code, pair programming with them. But when you think about it, every time you're importing new projects and you're adding dependencies, et cetera, you're adding a whole bunch of stuff. You're basically extending your team to the open source community. And so we found that 21,000 um, community contributors were contributing to the Black Hole Project. And we were like, oh, that might be a fluke. But then we went and we did that same calculation on 1,000 of the most popular open source repositories on GitHub. We found that on average, it's just about 75,000 uh, community contributors per project. That's massive. That's bigger than Google's engineering team, Microsoft's, Apple's. That's huge. So basically what you're doing is you're saying, OK, I have a project, and I want to enlist 75,000 teammates to help me build this thing. The power of open source, the power of having all of those people contribute to this is super important. And what this means to us at GitHub is that open source is one. Open source is actually what is powering us to create and write the future of software. And what's cool about this is that we actually predict, we have 40 million developers on the, on the platform today. We actually predict that by 2025, there'll be 100 million. So when you think about that, 50,000 jobs available are, are posted today, or 500,000 jobs posted today for computer-related uh, roles, 100 million open source developers. And what we want to do, our responsibility is to foster those people who are coming to open source, to develop them, grow them, and retain them in open source. And so it's even more important for us to think about, sure, we need to think about good developer workflows, we need to think about secure code. We need to think about everything that it takes to be able to contribute to open source and to run a project. But we also need to think about the newcomers and mentorships and those conversations that are happening to make, to, to make sure every, everybody stays welcome. Because ultimately, the future of open source, if we're going to get to 100 million developers, that level of advance, advancement is going to take everybody. So the future of open source is everyone. It's me, it's my colleagues back in San Francisco, it's all of you, it's, it's everyone. And I know this because we just released the State of the Octaverse. And one of the coolest things I found on that, on the State of the Octaverse, is how actually global open source is. Some of the biggest countries that are growing in open source are actually India and China. And I, I encourage you, all of this data is available in the State of the Octaverse online. These are just a few. Uh, clips of it, I encourage you definitely go check that out. Um, there's a whole bunch more about open source that is pretty cool that we have discovered from, from looking at, our, at, at all of the open source data. So when you think about open source and you think about the projects you're using and the code you're using, I really want you to think about where that is coming from because this is truly a globally connected team. This is a, a still I took from a visualization that GitHub did a little while ago where we actually plotted over a 30-day cycle where all the commits were happening across the globe. And so these aren't just lights. These are actually commits that you see on this, on this globe, on, on, the, on this planet. And that's pretty powerful. It's happening everywhere, 100 million across the entire globe. And ultimately, what we want to do at GitHub is just keep the lights on. So thank you.